Um, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about um, some of the stuff, some of the techniques, the pattern drafting techniques that I went over just on the board, but I'm gonna try to um, wrap a lot of them up into a demo in which I uh, draft another skirt in Optitex. So obviously we went over a lot with the mermaid draft itself, um, but a lot of, you know, um, you know, the little variations and things like that, that we went over um, just on the board um, I didn't do an, an Optitex, so I just want to show you sort of how some of these uh, uh, drafting techniques that I went over in uh, that week, last week, uh, where we really just went over sort of pattern making technique, how they get applied to Optitex. So we're going to wait to log in for just a minute, and um, I, I, I made a little skirt flat to show you um, what we're going to do, but we're going to do that, which has a lot of sort of roundup of you know, um, pattern technique variations that we didn't do in the mermaid skirt. Um, now this draft that I'm going to do is going to really just be for your reference. Um, and then we're gonna draft this skirt right here. So it has a couple, you know, variations of techniques. So um, varied fullness in the ruffle, um, a seam that doesn't follow the dart line, but still hits that point that we need it to, that fullness point. Um, and then uh, uh, multiplying the darts instead of condensing the darts or adding new additional darts. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll do maybe this one as the back. This is the back view, and maybe this is the front. I know it actually looks like it's reversed because it should be, especially these darts are too long for the front. But um, it's more important to know how this works in the back because the fit is a little trickier than to do get right in the front. But it's done the same way, so I guess it doesn't really matter. So um, let's pop open Optitex. And I'll get my skirt sloper open. And of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch to inches as always. Actually for the drafts, like these sorts of drafts, the, the sloper manipulations, it doesn't honestly even matter if you work in, uh, in metric. Just depends on if, you know, if. People have uh, specified uh, measurements in inches, then you want to work in inches. But if people have specified their measurements in uh, metric, you can do that too. We'll say OK. Get rid of this down here so we have a nice workspace. And let me open my skirt sloper. Was it this one? Nope. Oh, right, it's in the network. And where did I have it hiding? Is it in here? Yes, it is. Okay, here we go. So here's the skirt sloper. Um, let's, like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is um, make a flared skirt. And this is fairly simple. Again, and it's really just sort of the, oh, I have this whole thing. Oh, that looks like the draft to this. Let me get rid of it. I don't need it. Let's clear our guys. Um, so again, it's sort of just like the ruffles. We just have to sort of adjust um, uh, according to the darts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the darts. Let's zoom in uh, over here. Boop. Cut piece tool, keyboard shortcut C. One, two. And I'm gonna disable this right now. So a couple people are asking me, oh, I disabled my box and, and now I can't get it up at all. I can't get the measurements up when I want them. Just remember that if you disable your uh, measurement box or if the measurement box isn't popping up for any reason, whatever reason, um, make sure to hold the Alt key down before you make a click. 
and that will force your measurement box up again. So I guess home, which I accidentally clicked, must be the fit and view zoom. And I'm just going ahead and what I'm doing is um, also deleting the darts after I cut them out, like the, the symbol, the little, so that drill hole down there, I don't, just don't want it in there. It's a little tricky to know where to click, that's for sure. There we go. Now, um, let's do the other side. held shift to do multiple selection there just to make it a little quicker and we're gonna go back I'm gonna do the back front now what I'm gonna do is I want to do the back uh, first um, and I'll, it'll kind of make sense because I want to make sure that the fullness in the front is the same as the back but to do this I'm gonna go ahead and um, Only really spin it out, only really rotate out the minimum amount to get rid of the need for the darts. So that means I'm going to have to do something a little bit differently on the front since the darts are smaller, but I still want to have the same fullness. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of cut straight down. It, you know, if you are careful with it, it should be fine. You don't need to take the, the specific measurements. If, it's, if the line is looking kind of crooked or wonky, you might want to measure it out. But if you just look straight or you want to just put use guidelines too to get a straight line, that's, that's fine. So I have one, two, three. Right here. So what I'm going to want to do is this is my center back that's going to stay on grain. I'm going to grab my rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R. I'm going to click this point and as you can see what's going to happen, let me just sort of show you. So here's sort of the dart shape. I want to rotate this piece so the dart legs close. So I'm going to kind of, whoop, kind of went crazy there, but let's, I'm going to try to just see what looks parallel. So this line and this line is parallel. Whatever that says, I'm going to kind of remember it. So we'll call that, you know, maybe 11 and a half, 11.6. And so, and I'm going to zoom in just to make sure, because this is a, a, a time that you really want to zoom in real close to make sure that you're lining it up properly. And I want to really get this point in point. Now that's fine. Now there's a little bit of a gap in there, but that's okay. What you don't want to do is rotate it not enough. Like let's, I'll show you this as an example. This is only half the distance I did before and do something like this. This is absolutely what you don't want to do because you see it's overlapping the pattern pieces here. So your high hip is now going to be too small in this area and it's not going to fit. So you need, um, you can do it further. So I can do something like this and match up the points here. Again, we always have to match up these waistline points because I want to preserve the overall width of the waist. This is fine. It gives you extra fullness, extra flares, extra, extra fluffy, flowy-ness, um, but you don't want to do it less. But like I said, I'm going to do it the minimum amount, which is just enough to close the darts. So I'm going to parallel that line with the other dart leg and move it nice and closed. Oh, did I? didn't do it quite enough. It looked pretty parallel. I guess I was wrong. My eyes deceived me. Now 
Oh uh, yeah, still not enough. I got it first first time. <laughs> now I got to do a bunch of wiggling. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. That's just fine. Okay, so no overlap and matching up this point right here. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now I'm going to guess, since that first one was about 11 and a half, that this one is going to be around 23. Let's see if that fits. Oh, I did, forgot to do negative. Sorry. It's turning outward, so it's a negative. That looks pretty good. Yep, there we go. That's good enough. A little bit of gap, but that's okay. But again, all this is nice and smooth. Okay, so now that I have that, I think I might only do one side for this. And then get to the uh, other draft. Okay, so now that I'm here, what I'm going to do is um, select all pieces. And you can do this it, one by one, it's fine. Or you can select all pieces by holding down shift. Protect all the pieces in the piece properties. Boop. And again, if your piece properties isn't there, you can right click on the selection and go to attributes and it'll pop up this window. Why they call it attributes in one window and why they call it piece properties in another, I still don't know. Seems like it's confusing for no reason, but hey. So then I'm gonna grab my draft tool and now that this is all protected, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do not want to remove the protection and redraft. Now this is gonna give me, again, we didn't shorten it, so this is completely full length. So this is a full length flared skirt. Now you see I made a mistake. My mistake was I held shift on that last point when I shouldn't have, but that's okay. I'm still gonna go on because it's super easy just to finish uh, fix in the, this sort of um, uh, other, oops, I didn't want that to happen. I want this one here. So what I'm gonna do, remember, we can select the point and I'm going to right click Go to attributes and um, make it a grading point and just undo that curve. So that's way easier. A lot of people say, oh, I messed up. I got to do the whole thing over again. Um, no, you don't. Let's fix that grain line. I hate to see inaccurate grain lines. But there you go. You go ahead uh, from here and um, you know put your seam allowance, put your pattern information, put your piece name. Uh, make some sort of finishing up here, whether it's a waistband or a facing. Um, we did waistbands in the previous draft, so I'm going to do facings in this draft. Uh, this new one that we're going to do this skirt for. And see, it doesn't have a waistband. Um, so I'm going to assume that there's a facing up here, even though I didn't put top stitch on there, and I really should have. Um, just so I, you get to see how it's done. Um, and you can do that. So a, a skirt waist needs to be finished somehow. Um, typically, it's always done by a waistband, but of course, there are some exceptions where we don't want a waistband, and that's fine too. We just have to finish it with a facing. So since we did waistbands in the last draft, I'm going to do facings in this one. Okay, so let's get started on this one. So I'm just going to do, 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 get back to my original. La, 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 la. Oh. Never mind. It only goes back so far. So I just gotta reopen it. I probably should have done this anyways. Just kinda like the the reverse, seeing everything in reverse mechanism, rewind. Okay. So um the first thing I wanna do is I wanna crop this to length. So I'm gonna assume that this skirt is uh, not full length. Let's call it just below knee length. Sure, why not? So, and that would be from here to this line. So it's, again, it's not full length. It's gonna be just below the knees. Um, let's maybe, actually let's call it mid calf. So if you remember, halfway between our hip and our ankle down here 
is our knee, and then halfway between that is mid-calf. So what I'm gonna do to find that exact location is I'm gonna use my point on contour tool, hold down Alt, click, and I'm gonna find the knee first, which remember is halfway here, so 0.5, 50%, okay? And, oh, I didn't, I didn't make it grading. I need that to be grading. And then halfway between this and this is now gonna be our mid-calf, and that's where we're gonna crop it off at. Okay, so I'm gonna drop down my guideline to snap right in that point, and then let's zoom in so I get a nice view of where I'm working. And I'm gonna grab, now I'm gonna also just double check that they're aligned down here. They're aligned down here, that's good. And just cut across. Beep. Beep. Okie dokie. Beep. Beep. Okie dokie. And let's delete this. And delete this because of course we don't need it anymore. That part of the skirt doesn't exist. Now, the next part that I want to do is I want to do the little flouncy bit. Um, so, if we take a look, we have this sort of shape in here. Um, now, of course, if we were, we can just sort of draw this out, but let's say that I have very specific measurements, and I'm just gonna um, apply some specific measurements to this. Um, so let's say the distance from this point this top point of the arch down like straight down to like here so up down this entire sort of uh, 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 rise from if this was an imaginary resort to a horizontal line from here to here let's call that 10 inches let's call the distance between here and here that's 10 what would it make sense um, three inches I'm just writing these down so I remember what they are. Three inches total from this point to this point. And then we have to figure out how tall this is. So if this was 10, let's call this, oh, I don't know, seven. Okay. And then let's get another little height from here to here. So if this is three, this is probably maybe four. Something like that. So. Uh, the height from just this little line here up to the point is four. The height from the point to right here, which, you know, imaginary line from here to here is 10 inches. This is seven inches. And from this point to this point will be three inches. We'll just call it that. Okay, so we need to measure it out a little bit. So that first uh, point I want is the full, that fullest longest length of the ruffle, which is 10 inches. I'm sorry, 17 inches. Because if this is 10 and this is seven, this to this is 17, right? Addition, hooray. Okay. So we're gonna zoom out zoom it in a little bit or adjust it a little bit. And uh, of course, um, I gotta remember this I was doing on the back, so this I'm doing on the front, even though it's um, pretty much the same. So yeah, I don't know. Let's do this on the front. It looks so much better. It doesn't really matter because the techniques you use for the darts is the same. Okay, so um, where's my center front? My center front is here. My highest increase is gonna be there. So from here to here or up here is gonna be 17 inches. Now I'm just gonna measure what this is right now. Remember that is where my knees are. Okay, it's not enough. So what's gonna be important is that I either delete or um, set that down to a non-grading point for this measurement. So I'm gonna add a point along my center front that is 17 inches from this point which is going to be right my previous point because if we travel around like this do, 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 I hit that previous and the one up here that we can't see next so that's my previous point so I'm going to 
tap in about 17 inches from there. Okay, let's see where that hit. Okay, that's fine. Now here along the side seam, I want it seven inches from my next point. Ooh, pretty close. Okay, so now I'm gonna make this sort of guideline through here. Now, um, since this is going by specific measurements and kind of is a, a specific style line and it is a little bit more complex, I don't want to jump the gun and go straight to my cut tool, uh, cut piece tool. Um, really, you can get away with that when it's very simple lines. I really want to draft this line out first and then cut it so um, I know exactly the shape that I'm cutting before I do it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm basically going to create a sort of a guideline for myself um, and then work my curves with that guideline. So from here down is going to be, here's the point, I'm going to do a next point here. So if this is three across, half of that is one and a half inches. And then this was four inches. So I want a point here that is four inches out on the X and, uh, I'm sorry, Y, negative four inches on the Y and positive four, uh, one and a half inches here. That's my next distance. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna hold down my Alt key to make sure my measurement box pops up. I'm going to be measuring not from zero, zero, which again is along our rulers, but from my last point, which of course is, will be this point. So here it is, I was pretty close in the one and a half inches, but I wanna do negative four inches. So that's gonna represent that sort of distance right there from here to here, which will be what we want. And we say, okay. And then from here, I'm going to snap it right there. Now that's all I need, so I'm gonna finish drafting, and that's sort of gonna be my guideline. So if we go back here to see, I see this kind of arches here and then kind of swings out to here. So now I'm gonna use those points as kind of a guideline to create doesn't matter though because I can zoom in and fix that uh, my line so right click finish drafting and there I have a little bit of a guideline and uh, what's nice is if I don't like anything I can go in with my move point tool keyboard shortcut M or it's on your in your toolbox and you can start to move it around um, I would really zoom in for that or else uh, what just happened to me is going to happen to you if you click on uh, with the move point on something that's not precisely the point that you want to move, it makes another one, it makes it all weird and wiggly. So I gotta really, see it's doing it again, which is super annoying. Why are you doing that? You, I want you. Don't make a new one. Let's see if it works any better if I make it a grading point. Oh, come on now. Do I really have to zoom in that close? Boop. Guess so. I guess so. Move point tool. All right, so. For some reason, it just does not want to give up on this being there, so let's just delete it. So you should just work like that. So let's see. And again, if you want to add more points to help you define the curves and things, you can do that as well. And then this one over here, I want it to pop off of the line. It's Sometimes it'll snap to different things, and even if you ask it not to, it'll still do it. So you just gotta move it slightly. Okay, so there it is. I've adjusted my line and I'm ready to cut. 
let's zoom out again. And when I cut, I want to go over exactly the dots that I made. So this way, when I cut, I don't want to be cutting extra points or, or points that aren't there or, or missing a point. I want to do exactly what I did when I drafted the line. So I'm going exactly on those points. Otherwise, you're going to get a shape that's different. All right. I don't need any seam allowance yet. I'm just going to bring this out and I can I can delete the lines now because I don't need them anymore because I've already made my cut. And now from here, um, I've made this shaped seam pretty much the way it should be. But now what we're going to do is we're going to um, do a little slash and spread to add these flares in. Now notice the flares are really only located in this middle section, maybe from about here down. It is flat from here. So because this is um, not um, equal fullness, I'm not going to make slashes and spread everything equally. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Sometimes when you do those lines and stuff, they have this little garbage hanging around. Now, um, if I want, if it's helpful to me, I can drag out a guideline to see exactly where those are going to start. And they're going to start like right here. So this is going to be pretty much flat and all my fullness is going to be about right here. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut this into about two sections. So I'm going to cut like right here. That looks good. And then let's cut about in the middle right down here. And again, I'm making it as straight as I can. If it's not perfectly straight, it's not that big a deal. Okay, this is on the center front, so that stays as is. Now remember what this point is. This can get a little confusing because this is the point that I want to join up number three with, the five point with number three. Not up here or else it's going to not be great. So always remember that. And I'm going to rotate out. Now these aren't huge flares, so I'm going to rotate out, oh, I don't know, just a little bit, not too much. Eight, eight degrees, that sounds good. Boop. And once more with this guy. Now, since the flares there were equal, if that was eight, I'm going to rotate this out 16. and place it right there and then there we are we're going to keep this as is because again that's flat it doesn't need any flares or anything so we're not going to do any slashy spready there um, we're only going to do it in the area where we have those little drapes so um select them all protect them all and draft them all nope now, especially with shaped seams like we have here, like um, it might get a little weirdly shaped, but don't worry, it should be fine. And if it's if the line seems like it's coming out, you do might you might want to make a few extra points. Weep. And then yes, I do. And then there we go. We have our lovely shaped ruffle with, let me bring it out, thank you very much, um, with uneven fullness. So fullness centered just in the front here and it's gonna be flat on the side. Okie dokie, so that's pretty much done. Let me just, Correct the grain line, and let's know that this is the front flounce. It's good enough for now. Now, if we want to, let's put seam allowance. Remember, it's going to be on fold. Just give it a half inch all the way around. Matter the corners. Okie dokie. And then there we are. I didn't put pattern information on it yet, but maybe we'll do that at the end. Okay, so what I want to do here is now I want to create, oh, sorry, I exited out of my little picture. Come on then. I 
I want to do this seam, okay? Now this is a lot like the princess seam, but remember, we don't have part of the seam sort of starting where the dart, original dart location was, so we have to do something a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in over here. Now I have to do two things actually. Um, one, we have two dart points where I really only need about one, okay? So I need to condense these into one dart. And I want that dart that I placed, I want its dart point to be the part that the seam goes through. So let's say that this point right here is where the original dart should go down and sort of end. Because remember, we want the seam to go through a, 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 a dart tip, even though there isn't a dart tip though. But when we're drafting it, we will have them. So let's say that's this one, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna delete them because I know how much it, the width was. The width was um, 5 eighths inch and 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is one and a quarter. And I'm gonna keep it at this sort of relative area right here. So I'm gonna delete some of these points, but I'm gonna measure it sort of, I'll keep five as the sort of uh, last dart leg. So I'm combining both of those darts into one dart. And remember, we have to keep the same depth and the depth was three and a half. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do with this one condensed dart is cut it. Cut, 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 cut. Actually, I don't need to, well, yeah, I'm gonna cut it. Cause I'm gonna show you, there's actually a couple ways to do this in OptiTex, but I'm gonna show you I'm gonna say the simpler one, but I don't know if it's the simpler one. But this is the way this is the way you would do it. That's most like if you were doing it on paper. Um, I'm gonna take out the dart, cut out the dart. I'll show you the other way to do it too. Um, can't hurt, right? Knowing two ways to do something, do it once. If it doesn't work, try it again. <laughs> okay, now what I want to do is I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And I'm going to draft in that seam line, this seam line. So it kind of comes from here. Let's say that this is, oh, I don't know, two and a half inches from my uh, waist along the side seam. It comes down about two inches, kind of curves around like this. We know it goes through that dart point here and then comes down to this place in the seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a point on my sign seam that's two inches from this point right here. I did it too close to the other one. And I'm gonna hold Alt so I get that measurement box. Of course, it was my previous. Doo -doo -doo. I want it grading, Okie dokie. And I'm gonna draft before I cut. Again, because it's a slightly more complicated seam. It's gonna come in here. This actually probably could have been shifted to the side a little bit. So here's the thing. So, oh, here's, here's actually a good instance. So let's say, oh, that's too far. I want it to be really a little bit more here or a little bit more here. Um, can I change where that dart tip is? And the answer is yes, but slightly. Um, you can't go crazy with adjusting your dart tip, but if it's not exactly where you want it, you have a little bit of wiggle room. So in this instance is a good example because I can grab my move point tool and say, oh, I'm just gonna grab that dart tip and boop, maybe shift it over just a wee bit. Um, that's fine, that little wee bit is fine. Now I don't want to shift it over here, that would be silly, that's too much, that's too crazy, um, but that is fine. Now remember, wherever this dart tip is, is where the fullness is. That's why we can't go crazy with it because where the fullness is on our body doesn't really change. It's always gonna be around here in this kind of area. So if I move it up here, we're just gonna get a big bubble kind of um, right below our belly button or right sort of at our belly button. Okay, anywho. So um, zoom out a bit again. And let's position. So I wanna go from here 
through here down to probably like that point right there. So let's grab my, grab my drafting tool and go ahead. And again, I'm gonna just sort of generally do it. I'm not gonna worry too much at this point about it looking exactly the way I want it. Because remember, I can always move my points after. So let's see, see how it swings like that? Let's check our original. It doesn't really do that. It kind of goes straight down, so I'm gonna um, zoom super in. Oh, it doesn't do that weird wiggly sh stuff. Uh, Oops, I almost heard. Actually, I should probably go down to here, but that's okay. Again, I can, I can, I can fix. I can fix. Let's fix that first, maybe. Can I do? Is it gonna do that? No, it's gonna do something else. Let's delete that out of those. Clean it up so I know I'm not getting confused with what elements I'm moving. Let's move that right down there. And then I want this straighter, so I'm going to grab this and move it straight. If it's not doing it now, I don't know why that was doing that before. Sometimes OptiTex is a mystery, even to me. And I've been using it for years. Ah, that looks great. Okay, so that looks uh, just like the drawing, so I'm going to keep it. And cut it. Doot -doot. All right, snip, snip. Holding shift to curve. Oh, okay, that's fine. So what it did is since I cut here and here, it's uh, this is gonna be one piece, which is fine. That's totally fine. We're just gonna move forward and I'm gonna cut now this other side. that might need a little bit of cleaning up in there. So now I have this that's been, this piece that's sort of been cut into two pieces we have here, and then this guy here. I'm done with this. The only thing I might wanna do is, since I drew that line there and then cut it, there might be, you know, look at all this kind of messiness here. You kind of go back, this is, you know, and delete some of this stuff just to clean it up. It's not super necessary. It's not like it's really changing the pattern piece all that much. It's just, I hate mess, I hate mess and clutter, especially on my patterns. Actually, pretty much only on my patterns. If you looked at my studio right now, you wouldn't believe what I just said, but on my patterns. <laughs> okay, so um, this piece is done. I don't need to do anything more with this piece, except for, you know, obviously add seam allowance in change the piece name and all that good stuff. But here we still have this dart and I don't want a dart. I don't have that in the picture. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my join piece tool to join this dart together. Okay, looks good. Points coming together where I want them. Green line uh, joining the lines that I want to come together. Again, if it didn't look like that, I just change direction um, or, or just adjust again. And I'm probably going to want to change this one to a curve point just to smooth it out a little bit. Um, but there we are. So let me show you this now. I'm going to rotate this back so this, this is going to be like a straight grain. So like right like this. So we have like they're aligned by their grains. Even well, let's change the grain because now it's all weird and up there. Okay. It's, since it's up there, let's, let's go ahead and um, adjust it. Let's first, let's see, piece properties. Let's see if this works. It didn't before. Oop, nope, okay. We're just gonna go back, do the fail safe. Doop, there we go. Um, what I can do, this will be our center front now. <laughs> front, center front, front skirt, center front, that's fine. Um, but what I really wanna show you, aside from all this sort of, you know, little, nonsense, is what happened to the dart. So um, this is what I talked about a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in those, uh, you know, pattern drafting technique videos is you're still going to be able to sort of see the dart in the negative state space between scenes. And only when you see that negative space, 
it, um, you know, looking like this, you know, you get that sort of dart shape or that difference, um, then you know you're getting the fit that you want. You're gonna get volume, you're gonna get shape. Without it, you're not. So um, this and this are fine. Let's, let's just go ahead and um, I'll finish them off. This is too much. Center front skirt, side front skirt, and let's just slap on some seam allowance. I don't know if we're going to do all the powder labels for this. Um, of course, this is unfold. Good half inch all the way around. Mitered corners, fantastic. This gets seam allowance all the way around. Click once, click again on the same point. There we go. And that's basically, that is this. Um, hooray, we did a complicated skirt draft, yay. Um, now let's go ahead and do the back. I'm not gonna do this again because you just saw this, so that's, there's no point to that. I am just gonna show you how to do this and then we're gonna go on and do the skirt facing. Um, so, Let's just assume that I cut that whole seam out of my back and I did this whole thing here. Now you say, hey, hey, is it the same thing? So can I just copy this and flip it and paste it for this? And I'd say, oh, that would be fantastic, but unfortunately, no. Um, there's a small difference. Essentially, you... You could wiggle it out, but you'd have to adjust this. So this back piece is slightly wider than the front piece was. So that means that there's going, this, this seam is going to be slightly too small to fit into what I put here. Now I could probably just add a little bit on the edge, whatever the distance difference is and use it for here, that'd be okay. But it's really, really better to cut it out of this because whatever I kind of cut from here is, I know it's gonna match up here exactly because this was cut from here. You know, um, if I make any difference, any small difference in my back cut for this seam, it's, it's gonna start to affect how this sits into it. So I really wouldn't recommend it, even though it kind of looks like you might be able to cheat that way, but there's just too many small, subtle difference, even though they, in general, look the same. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is make this into three darts. So um, it's two inches a dart. I'm sorry, one inch a dart with a two inches total dart intake. I want to divide that into three. So two divided by three is two thirds, <laughs> pretty obvious. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, um, put our new dart lengths in. So I'm deleting all those original points. I still will kind of want to keep this little one which is giving a little bit of a curve to it. And I'm gonna leave this one because I want them to end where they were. So um, let's grab my add point on contour tool and let's meter them out. So this is of course my previous point. So two thirds and let's make it a grading point. I don't need the point. Point is only if there's a whole number before it, sorry. Um, what's the distance between them gonna be? Oh, let's keep it a half an inch. And one more. Half inch distance between the darts again. Um, if you didn't want to do this, the decimal for two thirds is uh, 0.67. All right, and we can, you know, double check that. So, boop, boop. That looks good. 
Let's add our darts in. The dart width, I'm sorry, length is not going to change. So it's going to be five and a half inches. Oh, so close. Beep. When you get it spot on, it feels great. three darts easy peasy um let's go ahead and um that's right i was going to show you how to do the other way for the um but actually you know what never mind because the way when we do our facings i'm going to show you the technique that you would use before and i'll just explain it um okay so there we are now we have three darts instead of two darts it still again has the same um dart and take now, as you start to get more darts, um, again, remember the fullness starts to spread out. So if you wanna start to kind of point them in to sort of narrow where the fullness is gonna be, like maybe I want this to start kind of, I don't want it to be so wide like this, we can move the tips of our darts. So I'm gonna use the dart tool and I'm gonna click the tip of the dart and then I'm gonna draw out. And what draws out is this little green line and I'm just gonna click again where I want the dart tip to be. And it's just gonna go ahead and pinch it in a little bit more. So I can go ahead and do that if I want to start to pinch in where my dart tips are. So I get a more narrow area or smaller area of fullness that's not like as big. So we can always do that as well. Okay, cool. So um, now let's add a facing, woohoo. Um, what I want to do is let's do this one first. So um, this is going to be easy because there's no darts in it. It's just the waistline. What I'm going to use is called the Create and Parallel tool, which is right here. Create Parallel tool. And I'm going to click that. It's keyboard shortcut P. You can also find it in your uh, toolbox under uh, Build and Cut. Never mind. It's under contour. Yeah, right here. Keyboard shortcut P, or again, it's just right up here. Create parallel. Um, and I'm gonna. So remember, this is uh, an instance where Optidex is gonna think it clockwise. So I need to travel in a clockwise pattern around my figure. And what I'm gonna do is I want my facing to finish my waistline, right? So I'm gonna click at the very beginning of my waistline, which is here at the center front on my front piece and at the side seam. And uh, In this instance, we're gonna have two facings. We're gonna have one for the front and one for the back. That would be pretty normal. Now that I've selected this whole waistline, which again, start here, stop here, I'm going to uh, ask uh, it to create a parallel line two inches um, from this line. And two inches is a good uh, um, just sort of general rule of thumb width for our facings. And so two here, that's the distance sort of from this line. Two inches is we're going to follow this contour line down two inches and we'll do it here on the other side as well. We'll say, okay, do I wanna do this? It doesn't matter whether you say yes or no here. I'll just say yes. And then there we go. We get a lovely um, shaping, uh, facing shape, but it is not a pattern piece yet. Remember that our facings are separate pieces of fabric. So we need to go to our build and cut and build piece tool, keyboard shortcut B, it's also, um, it's right there. And I'm going to click on that shape, that facing shape, until the entire shape that I want is green. Then I'm going to right click, finish drafting. Now this is our facing piece. We can take it out. We can add seam allowance. Since this is gonna be on fold, it would be everywhere but my seam allowance. Oops, I did this backwards. And that would be, of course, 
front facing. Alrighty, let's do the back. Now, like I said, the back is going to be a little bit more complicated because we got those darts in there. But let's make it first the same way. Beep. Now, um, it's more complicated with the darts because we do not want any darts in our facing. We never have darts in the facing. You don't need them because they don't go deep enough to need the fit and they create added bulk that you just don't want. So again, I'm gonna work in a clockwise manner. So here's where I want it to begin. Here's where I want it to end. I'm gonna do everything the same as I did before. Okay, sure. Still, I'm gonna do everything the same. I'm gonna build my piece and I'm going to right click and finish drafting. Now I'm gonna check to see if these darts were transferred over. They were, which is fantastic. So now what I'm gonna do, so remember when I joined the pieces because I cut, so I, this, is, this is where I was, this is a similar technique to what we did before. So remember, boop, 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 on the front here where I actually cut out the dart and then used the join piece tool after everything was done? The second way of doing it is not to cut the dart out, okay? Is to wait till you just cut the seam and then to select the dart and close the dart. Close it and then delete it. And you'll close it um, like what I'm gonna do right now for these guys. And it will kick this side up just the same way. You'll, you'll get the same pattern piece. It's just another way of doing the same thing. Um, here I'm gonna use that technique. I'm gonna use my tools darts closed darts you don't want any of these other weird closed dart options and fine it only likes to close a dart straight but it doesn't matter because we're going to get rid of them anyway you can see what's happening you can see it curving around as we close the darts too don't you that's perfectly fine, that's what it would do because when we close the darts here, that's what's gonna happen to the waistline. It's gonna curve up like that. So what we're doing by closing the darts here on this facing part is making a facing piece that's gonna fit our waistline after the darts are closed. Dude. Okay, they're all closed. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete them all now. To make this a little bit smoother, I'm gonna make all these pieces um, curved, or these points curved, just to make it a little bit more fluid. A little bit easier. These ones down here. Now, I'm probably gonna uh, delete some of these guys. These are everywhere that the, uh, the dart was intersecting. And so there's like just a whole bunch of nonsense points that we don't need. Probably, I'm just gonna, you know, for every three of these little clusters, I'm gonna reduce it down to maybe one. So we only need one in here, too. All right, now let's curve these guys. And zoom out, see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. Um, this is my center back. This is my center back. So I need the grain to be aligned with my center back. So I'm just gonna double check to make sure that it is. Ah, it was a little bit of adjustment. Let's add seam allowance to. Um, center back is also on fold. So no seam allowance on our center back. Okie dokie. So there we are. Um, oh, right, yeah, let's give it a better name. Boop. Okay, so I didn't do my, my, my pattern information for this, but again, this is really just a demo to try to show you guys some alternate techniques and sort of variations of the techniques that we went over. You do not need to make this draft. If you wanna make this draft, you can for extra credit. That's perfectly fine. If you get, 